This week's project is going to be more involved, not a dress in a day. Vogue 1677. If you watched my haul, you've already seen this and the fabric. My fabrics have been pre-washed, so I've finished off the raw edge where it was cut and washed it and dried it like it's going to be. I have this beautiful, it's a toile, it's a figural, but it's a, a quilter's cotton. So nice and soft, perfect for a shirt waist. That's the main body of the dress. The cuffs, the front placket and the inner collar is out of this um, gingham check. And then I have this, which you may have seen before. I love this and it's just the outer edge of the collar. These are my fabrics. So I'm gonna go cut everything apart and get my pattern prepped so we can, I can show you the cutting out. You can expect to see me in different clothes because this is gonna take me a few days. These are the pieces I'm cutting out of the gingham check. I've already cut the interfacing for all of these. You can see the interfacings on the back. This is the front um, placket and there needs to be four. So I have actually doubled this multiple times. This is a wide gingham. So I'm gonna cut that first and then open it up to get two cuffs, two of these little laps for the, the little continuous lap for the sleeve. And then we just need a single of each of these. So I've opened it back up so that I had two layers and I peeled back. I've already cut out of this little area, the lap and the cuff. And now I have just one layer left. So I'm cutting out the rest of the collar. I'm now cutting out the main body of the, of the garment and it is directional. So you can see here's my little building and I want to make sure that I don't end up getting it upside down. So if you're working with a directional fabric like this, make sure that you don't um, flip a pattern piece. For instance, here's the back. If I were to cut it like this, then all of my figures would be upside down on the garment. So I'm going to go ahead and cut out my sleeve and um, refold it for cutting all these little pieces that go on the fold. And then the skirt pieces get, op it will be opened up to a single layer to cut the skirt pieces. So here's my cutout pieces, sort of a mess, but you can see what I've got done and my skirt. Now the back skirt is wide and it's supposed to be cut on the fold, but you are going to have to have at least 60 inch wide fabric to get this on the fold. So I'm going to have a little skinny seam in the back of mine. And then for the back yoke, I centered the yoke on the pattern, and then I decided for the lining part of the yoke, I went ahead and cut it out of the um, same thing that I'm using for the placket and the cuffs, because I just think it'll be cute on the inside. I'm all cut out and the pattern is prepped, and I'm going to take a break, so I'll see you tomorrow for sewing up. It's day two, and the first thing we're gonna do is interface over here. I'm gonna put the interfacing, everything that needs interfacing added to it. That's what we're doing next. I like, just show you the thing I have. You've probably seen this in some of my other videos. This is a silicone mat. I actually have a set of three so I can stack them on my ironing board. The thing I like about this is when you're interfacing, um, it's very easy to have a little overlapping piece for the iron-on, the fusible interfacing, and then it fuses to your ironing board, leaves residue. It can come up as a dirty spot on your fabric when you go to iron something else. So I like to use these little um, silicone mats on there for doing interfacing and then I don't have to worry about my ironing board getting any residue on it. It's just a safe way to go. And if you're really concerned, you can actually layer them one on top of each other. So you can put, put one down, put the thing you're interfacing, then put another one on top and do it that way. Great protection. So I'm going to lay these down and do my interfacing. Here's the silicone mat. I've placed the thing I'm going to fuse right side down. And then I have my interfacing. You can feel the little glue dot, so that goes against the wrong side of the fabric. And we press on this side to start fusing. And when you fuse, you press straight down like this without steam. Don't rub it back and forth. That just moves the piece and moves the glue and you're gonna have less adhesion. Everything's interfaced and I've gone ahead and stay stitched to the front of the bodice. My chair is so loud. Um, which is just running a basting stitch along the stitching line, the 5 8 inch, and that's because this is 
almost biased. It's very stretchy and that's just going to keep our neckline stable. You go, you do the basting line from the shoulder all the way down and they actually have a little notch in the front that's to help align our placket and you just stop your basting line there. So I did that on both pieces and now we're going to um, attach our yoke to our back. So here's my back, here's my yoke and one of the things that I did differently is you cut two yokes of your um, fabric and what I did is I cut one of the yokes of the contrast so this is not going to be on the inside where you can't see it I will know it's there but it matches my um, placket pieces so I I thought that would just look really attractive on the inside so I only did one yoke of my um, my main fabric and then one yoke out of my contrast that's the placket cuff so we're going to sew this to this and they fit together perfectly. They're just going to go like so. Now, if you just did your basting along your front, make sure you set your sewing machine back to your regular stitch length. This is how it looks with the yoke on, and I've pressed my seam allowance up. But as I was sitting and pressing this, I realized I missed an opportunity, so I'm actually gonna take it out. I'm going to make a little piping out of this to set in that seam. So I've cut a piece of bias, I put a little piping cord in there. I wish it had a little bit smaller cord, but it's going to be fine. I'll sew it real tight and it'll be okay. Just making some piping. Put it on my zipper foot. Set it for a straight stitch. Move my needle position over and stitch down. And you see that little fine line of binding right there? Can you see it? So cute. Okay, I really am happy I chose to do that. It added a little time, but it's worth it. Those are the things that take things up a notch, I think. Now that that's done, we're just going to sew together our front and our back at the side seam. Um, you can do a French seam, a mock French seam, zigzag it, serge it, bias bind it if you're doing something like this where it's heavy enough. Um, as much as possible, I want to use self-enclosed seams. You could even do a flat felled seam, though I don't want a lot of extra top stitching on this particular garment. But depend if you were doing this in like a chambray, all those flat felled seams could look so nice. So I'm going to go ahead and do a... The directions say on step four, it, sa it says to make a French seam if you want to. So... I know that a French seam is going to be difficult to do for the side seams of the skirt, however. I think I'll do French seams throughout. To do a French seam, I have a video for French seams, so go um, click here to see how to do a French seam, but you actually, instead of putting right sides together, you put wrong sides together when doing French seam. This is my beautiful little French seam at the side seam. It doesn't look like anything. It's practically invisible from the inside. It's all self-enclosed, so there's no worry about fraying or anything with that. It always elevates a garment to have a self-enclosed seam. We are now going to take our skirt pieces on step five, and there's a little marking on the skirts, and it's um, where the shirt tail hem comes up and gets sewn, and they have us reinforce that a quarter of an inch in, so that's just or a, a quick little uh, basting stitch right there. After that, it has you go ahead and hem it, front and back before we put the pieces together. And we've done this before in another garment where we're going to baste along that curved edge so that we can pull in those basting stitches to make them cup under to top stitch it because we're going to do a rolled and top stitched hem all along the bottom of this. So I'm going to go ahead and do my little reinforcement and my basting on my hem and I'll show you a little close up of me drawing that up. This is my basting line right here along this curved edge of the skirt. Here's my little thread. I know it's gonna be hard to see because I'm sewing in white because it just doesn't show on this. And we're going to just gently pull this so that this curved edge will start to cup. And what will happen is you'll get it to cup enough that we can turn it along this curve like this. So I'm gonna just put a few pins in. The nice thing about this too, so this quarter inch is perfect for cupping under, and then it helps us measure for the other fold line. And as we go around our curve here, it 
if you get to a spot where you need a little more pull, you can just take a pin, like right here, and you can grab the thread and just pull the thread in that one little spot to help pull it up, because we're gonna pull that thread out when we're done. So this is how we do the curved edge on the hem, and because this is a shirt tail hem, you have four of these little curved edges. I apologize, I know the camera's wiggly. I have it sitting on the ironing board that I'm using, but this is what it's gonna look like all the way around. And then of course for our straight areas, we don't even have to worry, it's just a double turn like that. Press everything in and then we're just gonna top stitch it down. So I'm going to do that for all four pieces. On the side here, Here's, I have my little stay stitching. This is my little circle mark. I know it's hard to see. And it, the directions say, right at that circle mark, we've done our stay stitching, you're gonna clip in a quarter of an inch. And that's to get this folded for the hem and then leave this free to come back and do our seam finish later. So we have to do that too. So the trim part is, so we're gonna clip. Usually we clip all the way up to our 5 8 inch, but this one says only to clip at a quarter inch. And here's my basting, so I can, and I stopped it right before that. So I'm just gonna clip my quarter inch. And that helps so that when I get ready to turn this, see how that turns that in. And then this is still open and free for us to do our, our seam finish for the rest of the skirt. And I'm also going to add my pockets to that. This is how it looks before I get ready to stitch it in using my straight stitch foot that's also a quarter inch foot, so it has the eighth inch and quarter inch markings going in all directions to help me keep this nice and straight. So the edge of my fabric is right here on the outside edge of this toe, and it gives me a perfect stitch. done the front panels at the hem. I'm getting ready to start the back panel. And the back is cut on the fold, but my fabric was not wide enough for that. I had 45 inch wide fabric and it really needs to be 60 to get this on the fold. So I added a little extra and um, of seam allowance so I could put a seam down the center back. So this is my French seam in the center back. And now I'm going to do the same as I did for the front and do a little tiny double roll and top stitch it down my hem. All the hemming is done. It's very pretty. I need to press it, but there's some very nice little hems in all my pretty corners. So the back is hemmed and the front is hemmed independently. And then if you're doing a French seam, because we have the little clip here, it's very easy to lay these on top of each other, do the quarter inch, flip it, and do the three quarters of an inch, or yeah, the three eighths of an inch um, to get your French seam. I'm doing a, a pocket, however. You can't put um, I can't do a French seam and do the pocket without many more clips and so forth. So instead I am just going to serge my side seams up so that it's easy for me to get my pocket in because pockets are vital. So I won't be doing French seam on mine, but you can certainly do a French seam on yours. And once we get the side seams done, we're up to step 10, which is gathering that upper edge getting it ready to um, gather to attach the skirt to the bodice. So I have a little sneak peek at the inside. Here's my side seam. Here's the pocket. Now the waist, this is about the waist right here on the shirt because it's um, a high waist or an empire waisted. So the actual waist of the body's here. I didn't want my pocket all the way up here under the bust. I want it lower where I would actually use it. So this is my pocket. But because I usually like to have the pocket caught in the seam so it's not saggy. So this is my little trick. I have a ribbon attached and after I get this all sheared and attached I'm going to pull this up and attach it inside that seam and that's just going to help support the pocket so I don't have a saggy pocket. Now that I have the skirt all together and the bodice together at the side seams I'm ready to um, pin my skirt to my bodice at the side seams. So I'm going to open up my bodice, right sides together. Here's my little side seam, and here's my skirt side seam. 
and we're going to line that up and put a pin in it. And when I did my basting um, lines, instead of doing one long basting line across the entire thing, I broke it up. So I have a basting line for the front panel, and then for half of the back panel, the other half of the back panel, and the other front. And that just makes it much easier to pull up those gather lines. And I did do a double row, so I have one um, basting line at quarter inch and one basting line at five eighths of an inch. And now we're just going to pin, before I do any gathering, I'm going to pin my side seams in my center back. And then I will pull my gathers to make it nice and even. And make sure when you're pulling your gathers, I'm going to just pin my front right here. Here's the front um, bodice to front skirt. You do not want gathers in this 5 eighths of an inch. So I'm actually going to put a pin 5 eighths inch in because there's a um, a placket piece that gets sewn here. So we don't need any gathers within this little bit of seam allowance. The gathers need to start after that. So here you can see the fullness of the skirt to the bodice and that's all that's going to be gathered for just this front panel. I'm going to continue pinning it in and when I get it pinned and my gathers pulled I'll show you how pretty it looks before I stitch it. Here's the gathering and the pins on the inside of the waistband. And here's the, percent, the front where the placket's going to go. So you see there's no gathers in that 5 eighths of an inch. Here's the shirt side. That's it. And then we're just going to stitch it right along. So I'm pinning in sections. This is the first front. I'm going to go ahead and do the next back piece. And then here's my little pocket with a little um, piece of ribbon to help give it stable stabilization. So once this is stitched in. I'm going to just bring this piece up like this and tack it in so that it helps hold the weight of the pocket up. But it's still free floating in there and will allow all of this to move freely and won't pin down any of the gathers. Here is the skirt attached. You can see the ruffle or the gathers I mean. This is the back of the shirt or the bodice and this is from the inside. I haven't given it a haircut yet, but what I am going to do is go ahead and just serge this entire edge all the way across to enclose it. And let me show you where the pocket is. Really here. here we go. So here's the pocket. On the inside, you can see here's the little ribbon that's holding it. So you can see how it's free, free floating in there. Won't affect the gathers, but nice and secure. And I'm going to go ahead and serge across this part too. And then it's attached. But we are up to this point. Step 12 is to stay stitch this outer edge of the band that is not interfaced. You'll see that in step 21 we'll do the other one that is interfaced too. So I went ahead and stay stitched all the band pieces and just got it over with. So I've done this and now we're going to start pinning on the non-interfaced one to the front of the shirt. And in order to do that, we've got to do some clipping. So let me show you what that looks like. Pinning on the facing right now, it's going to come out like this around the neckline. Okay, so can you see the shape here? So here is the stay stitching and here are the clips. This is that inner curve. I fold this over. Can you see the inner curve? And so how I did this is I pinned up here at the top a few pins where it's straight and then I came all the way down here to the bottom and it hangs off about 5 eighths of an inch and I pinned at the bottom and I just pinned this whole long straight area and there's notches on both the garment and on the facing piece to help you line everything up and then I did my little clips in here and made everything fit fits beautifully. So now this is ready to be stitched. I'm going to pin for both sides and stitch it on. Here's the facing stitched on and now I'm going to press it over like this. This is the front shoulder and once it's pressed open we're going to take the back shoulder and we're going to match them up and you can see how wide the back shoulder is and now the front shoulder is the same width with this piece on there. So that's our next step is this shoulder seam which is right here and we're not going to worry about doing a seam finish on this shoulder seam for now because if you look farther along we actually have the yoke that's going to come and cover our shoulder seam in these steps coming up so we're going to finish to here and then we're going to start moving on to collar pieces all right let's do a quick re recap of where we are 
We are up to shoulder seams. I'm just going to hold this up so here we can see the, how it's going to look, the beginnings of how it's going to look. Here's our little front panels. The skirt is on. Look at the pocket. There it is. Pocket. Looks great. There it is from the inside. And then here's the back with the cute little piping along the yoke. We're on step 15, so we're going to start working on the collar. Here we are with pattern pieces seven and eight, and I have stay stitched the corner, which is in white, so it's very hard to see. But I've stay stitched this corner so I can do some clipping in here, and I've gone ahead and marked the center of both of the collar pieces, and I've just lined them on top of each other right now. And the next thing we're going to do is we're gonna come in and clip right here, get my scissors, and we're clipping up to but not through. So I'm going to the corner here, one in the corner like this, and then a couple like this. So we're kind of making a little fan. Again, up to but not through. So let's see how this will flex out and move. So we're going to start pinning. I'm going to start pinning here. And I'm going to pin up here in the corners and kind of in between, and then we'll get this little curvy spot figured out. So I'm down here pinning this corner, and I am discovering that no matter how many little slices I make, I cannot get this to come into the 5 8 inch mark right here in this corner. It does lay down fine. I'll show you on this side. So it's going to fold back like this, but this just does not reach. If this corner comes up here at the 5 8 inch mark where it's supposed to, to fold back. So, um, I don't know. I think it's just going to be a little longer in this extra. It, it, everything goes together and fits. But what happens is when you look at the dimension of this trim piece, it's a little wider here in the corner than it is throughout the rest because it just doesn't stretch. It's almost like this needs to be a tiny bit longer. Um, I don't know. It's just not going together like I expected it to. I'm going to go ahead and stitch it in and fold it back and see. It does fit together. It does go. In my personal preference, I would like this dimension to be exactly the same around, and it just grows a little right there. So we'll see. I'm going to put it together, and I'll show you what it looks like. So when sewing this, you're going to kind of flatten down this area. You can even pin it down like that so that you can... So right over your 5 8 inch line, and you're going to stitch right over your um, basting line here, your stay stitching in this curvy area. So just take it slow, use lots of pins, and you'll get it. So here it is stitched and pressed. This is the back side when you press it. So that's how it looks so far. And then we're going to take pattern piece, I believe it's 9, which is the back one, and we're going to match them up and stitch around it, and then turn it inside out. So we're gonna stitch around the curvy parts, leaving it open here to turn it through, and we will have to, here in the corner, clip, 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 so it turns nice and maybe trim out a little bit. Notice that pattern piece nine is actually a little bit smaller than the thing you just sewed, and it's supposed to be. It's the under collar, and it helps the upper collar wrap around, so if you'll see it says stretch on here. So we're going to, pin all of our corners together in our center, and then we will actually stretch to get it to fit together. And when we turn it, it'll make this wrap to the underneath side and it makes for a much prettier collar. So now you can see the difference between the under collar and the upper collar, and you can just see there's a little bit, see how it cups a little bit. So when I'm sewing, I'm gonna put the larger one on bottom that allows the feed dogs to help work, and the top tends to stretch anyway, just from the presser foot pressure. So we're going to just sew this around and flip it around. Once you've got your pretty little curve sewn and trim out your pie wedges. So we're trimming out the little pie shaped pieces out of there so that when we turn this it's not too bulky on the inside. I'm pinning this giant collar on here and I'm getting 1980s Laura Ashley vibes, big time. <laughs> big collar, the colors, the prints. Oh my goodness. So, collar is on. Got these all done. 
and I've gone ahead and done this day stitching earlier. I talked about it, I think, back at step 12. So now we're going to turn up the outer edge of the interfaced piece, which is right here. And the reason they had us do this little stay stitching on that edge is because this is going to cup around and tuck under, and that little stay stitching really helps. So the only place that we have to um, do anything is right here where this inner curve is. We're going to come do some little clips so that it'll release to turn because it's too tight otherwise. And we're just going to press that under. And then we'll be ready to start adding it to the back yoke. back yoke, my back side of my front placket facings here were pinned on. You can see this is the edge that's been um, pressed up and we're just going to stitch this at the 5 8 inch. And then it has us go ahead and do a stay stitching around this neckline again just to make it stable because there's a lot of bias in here and it stretches easily. So we're going to do those things. Um, and I, a quick reminder, my back yoke is a different fabric. Yours probably is the same as your main, your number one fabric. I cut mine out of a contrast just because I liked how it matched my facings. I thought it looked nice together. So I have everything sewn together. I've got my little front placket pieces onto my back yoke for the inside. And now I'm just pinning it onto the garment at the neck edge. This is going to go neckline to neckline. And then this folds over and encloses the inside. Makes it all nice and pretty. So I'm pinning this, and to pin this, I started, I pinned at each shoulder first, so I matched shoulder to shoulder. Everything's pressed into the yoke, so that the yoke itself is going to enclose all of the shoulder seams and the yoke seam, and um, all of that's taken care of. So the only thing we have to worry about finishing when we're done is around the arm's eye when we set in the sleeve. Everything else will be nice and enclosed, including with the placket down the front. So I pin my shoulders and once I pin the shoulder I go all the way down here to the hem and I match up at the bottom hem way down here I match that up oh, my light might be too bright so here's the the one that's hanging off so when they fold over there's about an eighth of an inch overlap which is just right for us to fold over and whip stitch it or top stitch it down up to you how you want to do it I'll probably whip stitch though I have not made that decision but uh, anyway I'm gonna just keep pinning up the straight end like this. And when I go to sew it, I'm going to put the interfacing on top and the uninterfaced, the non-interfaced one on the bottom. And that's just to allow the feed dogs to do all the work of making the two pieces match up and be happy with each other. And after we've done that, then it's really easy to come back and make this curve because we've got all the straight parts. The straight bits are all lined up and it, it actually lines up great. There's really no issues. You just don't want to start at one end and work to the other, so don't like start at the bottom edge and work your way around. You will get stretch and pull. Um, you'll get some movement between your layers, so always use your notches or your markings to help you. Start at the shoulder seams, do the center back, then go all the way to the bottom, and then put a few in the middle and work um, and that helps you keep from getting the natural movement and stretch of the fabric as you work from one side to the other, especially because this is so long. We've got that whole long placket down one front, across the neck, and back around the other side. So you're going to get a lot of movement in that too. If you want to, you can sew it all in one fell swoop if you've got it pinned really well. If you're concerned about having more movement, I have a little even feed foot on my machine that helps prevent movement between the layers. If you don't, if you notice you get a lot of movement from top to bottom, um, then you might sew it in sections to keep from getting too much push on the top and too much pull on the bottom so that they stay nice and even when you come out the other side. Okay, I'm going to pin and stitch this and press it up and show you how beautiful it is. We will have to do clipping in this neckline before we can press it around the curve of this neckline so that it'll wrap over nice because again, the inner curve is smaller than the stitched line and it won't turn nice without it. So I flip this over to do the bottom of the placket just so I can see where the skirt edge is so that I can line it up perfectly, not hit the skirt edge, but be right below it to sew my placket so that I have a perfect little hemline at the bottom. I'm gonna clip off, here it is. That corner we're gonna get close to but not through. See, there's my little stitching line. Trim off that little corner so that when we're ready to flip this around, we get a nice, pretty, straight little corner and we don't have any issues. And then up here at the neckline, 
we're going to go ahead and do our little clips along the neckline for um, turning and pressing. And we may have to, where this curve is, take some pie shapes out like we've done in the past. So I'm going to flip, turn, press, clip, not necessarily in that order. Here is the inside after that's all sewn. And here's the yoke. And again, your yoke is probably your main fabric. I did mine out of the contrast and it doesn't shadow through. If you are making like a white garment with red or black trims, it will shadow through if you do this. So make sure it's something that won't shadow through. Here it is. I've pinned back the seam allowance on the shoulder so I can just whip stitch it down along that shoulder seam. The same along the yoke. And then here is the back side of the placket. And it has us press up about 3 eighths of an inch, which I did, but it does hang off a quarter of an inch. So it doesn't get close to where I would like to whip stitch it. I wish I had turned up more. So I'm probably gonna have to repress and do this because most places it just hangs off too far for a good whip stitch to be hidden and not show through on my main fabric. And this is a good time to also give it a haircut start trimming, taking off any of those basting and stay stitching things that you did that might be um, showing through. So that's what I'm going to do. Um, whip stitch, a lot of handwork. I'm gonna, I'm assuming a few hours of handwork to do this entire long front down both sides. And then I will be back tomorrow, it'll be the same for you, to work on the sleeve. It's a new day. I've completely finished my plackets and done all of the handwork on the inside and in the yoke. Look at how pretty that looks in the yoke when I did it in the contrast. I just really think that's attractive. We're going to work on sleeves now. We need to transfer all of our markings, so like our shoulder and our little notches, our pleats at the bottom. And where we're going to be cutting open, this is to cut open for our continuous little lap, little inside placket part of the cuff. So we need to transfer all of our markings and then we're going to stay stitch this little triangular shape right here. And I'm actually gonna put pins in it, um, transfer the markings with pencil on the wrong side and just baste over it because it has to be split open to do our continuous lap. So I'm gonna do all that little bit of prep work and then I'll show you how to do the little lap part. These are the little pleats and you just want to make sure when you're folding your pleats that they fold toward your um, opening back here where you're gonna put your little continuous lap on. So fold towards the continuous lap. So here you can see, here's my pleat. This is where the continuous lap is going to be. I've marked it on the wrong side. I'm just going to stay stitch over that. And I've done that for both sleeves. So I'm going to baste down these pleats right here and then do my stay stitching and trim this up. Pressed in and stitched down the pleats here is that little V, and I, I know it's hard to see because I have my pencil marks, but I have stitched over it. And we're going to cut up right down the middle very, very carefully. You don't want to hit your threads and you want to get as close as you can to that point. Pattern piece 11. I also went ahead and basted the cap for um, pulling in any ease when it's time to set the sleeve in. So we're going to take our little tiny bias pieces like this and we're going to start pinning them in we're pinning right sides together so i'm going to start and it's a quarter of an inch and it won't be a quarter of an inch the entire way because you can see how this angles in so it'll be a quarter of an inch off of this piece but not off of the actual shirt so you can see how it's going to look i'm actually going to pin it put one of these on each end all right, so now, and I flip it to this way so you can see, and if it helps, mark your center so we can pull this down, and it's going to be straight across like that is how we're going to stitch it. And when you're stitching it, you want to stitch just into and past, but you don't want to make a little pleat right there. 
Okay, so I'm gonna put a couple more pins and I'm gonna straight stitch right across it. And I'm pretty much stitching right over my stay stitching. You wanna make sure this little spot is about just less than a quarter of an inch away so that we have a nice straight line. All right, so now you can see that's where we're gonna stitch. That's where we're going to stitch. Make sure when you're stitching this that you go to a little bit smaller or shorter stitch because right in here is pretty fragile and you want to have a nice tight stitch to keep everything together and make it stable. I'm gonna sink my needle right there and just move the excess fabric out of the way. that this is stitched on we're going to take this piece and we're going to fold it kind of in half so it meets and then we're going to fold it again so that it's not so thick okay and then once we've done that we just start pinning it down so that you can either top stitch it or I'm going to whip stitch it and I always come in and pick up the fold and then I'll pick up the top the stitching that's holding it down and I just whip stitch it all the way around. So I've got both sleeves ready to go. Now that we have our little continuous laps sewn in, they fold, so here's the right side of my sleeve, they fold to the inside and you can, and often you will see it done, where when it's folded to the inside like this, you'll see sometimes where they'll do a little um, triangle stitching, just a little corner right here and that just helps hold everything in place and make it nice and sharp so that from the outside it stays pretty and flat like this now when they fold over so this is the main part of the sleeve so this is the long part of the sleeve where my pleats are the little continuous lap will fold right behind so you can't see it and then the second part of the sleeve the short part fits right behind it but it sticks out and that's important when we go to do our cuff which is what's coming up but before that we're going to go ahead and sew the underarm seam I'm going to do a French seam which means that we're going to do it wrong sides together quarter inch flip it around stitch three-eighths of an inch and have a, a completely self-enclosed sleeve which is what I did on my side seams so I'm going to do that real quick for both sleeves and then we're also going to take our little cuff and on the cuff's just a rectangle, so on one side we're going to fold back 5 eighths of an inch and press it. And then we'll be ready to sew the cuff to the sleeve. So we're going to do our underarm and we're going to press under a 5 eighths of an inch. And we'll be back together in a minute. Look at these lovely sleeves. Here's my seam. There we go. So you can see here's where our little placket opening is. Where the cuff is going to go. Here's our pleats. Very nice. Okay. And the inside, so here's my French seam, completely self-enclosed. And I have pressed down my 5 eighths. So we're gonna now take this cuff, and it's pretty straightforward pinning it on. We're gonna do right sides together. It's going to hang off 5 eighths of an inch on each edge. So here's my um, opening where I just put in that continuous lap little placket thing. We're gonna hang it off the 5 eighths and pin it on and it's going to wrap around the whole sleeve to the other side and this side the um, placket stays open and gets pinned on and we need our 5 eighths to hang off because this gets folded in half and um, it's actually going to get folded this way and stitched shut so we've got a half seam allowance there we're just going to pin this on, and this part's easy. We're just straight, uh, the cuffs really aren't that hard on this, which is great. So we're going to pin, and you can see it fits perfectly. See how that just fits on there just right? If you get your pleats divided right, it sews right. So we'll just sew both of those on, and then I'll show you how to fold it to do that edge. Then it's flip up and whip stitch. Cuff is sewn on, and then we 
I'm going to just flip it so you can see. So we're going to fold up all of our seam allowance towards the cuff and fold it in half so that we have, here's the one we pressed up before we started sewing it on, and here's the side that we've sewn so that we can just stitch right next to, right here, sew that up and we have our cuff ends and then it's ready to flip over and whip stitch. Now, this is really thick. There's a lot of layers here. We have um, two interface layers from the cuff plus this the sleeve and there's a seam, there's a placket, there's pleats. So, and it's recommended in the pattern to take the one that you pressed up but isn't sewn yet and to trim it back to like three-eighths of an inch, so take off about a quarter of an inch and that just helps grade out that seam a little bit and not make it so bulky on the inside and I think that's a great idea. Make sure everything's fitting and looks right before you start cutting anything off. But once you grade that off, go ahead and stitch both of those sides up and then we'll be ready to flip and we can whip stitch this down or you can can top stitch it if you want to. Again, I'm whip stitching everything. I don't want top stitching in this particular project, um, but that's up to you. If you want to top stitch it, go for it. It'll be fast and it can look really cute. So I'm going to put both of my cuffs together and then we're ready to set in our sleeves. All right, so I've got the cuff in and I'm now pinning in the sleeve. Make sure you use your markings, match up your notches, match up your shoulder. There is um, a little ease in here. So when you pull your basting line, you won't have gathers, but it will make it fit. So you can see the outer edge ruffles a little bit, but right where you stitch it is smooth. So it'll go in nice and smooth. For me, I'm going to, after I sew, the, sew this in, with my straight stitch, I'm gonna come over to the serger and serge off the excess um, and finish off that edge. You can also bias bind this edge or you can zigzag it. It's a little hard to do um, a French seam or a mock French seam on a circle like this. I think it is. So personally, if you want self-enclosed seams, go with bias binding, otherwise zigzag or serge it. My sleeves are in. Look at how cute that cuff is. I've surged the inside. So what's left, I'm going to give it a really good pressing all the way over. I'm going to get rid of basting stitches that show and give it a good haircut. And we have buttonholes and buttons and we're done. So I'm going to go upstairs and pet sit for my husband who has a very important meeting and we don't want the dog to bark and the cat to scatter papers in the middle of his meeting. So I'm going to go do that and then I'll come back and we're going to do buttonholes and buttons and try it on. All lined up for buttonhole production. There's the first one. My machine's preset and I have all my little markings. This is just gonna be the top of each button. And I line it up inside my presser foot with that little red line. And the machine does the rest. So I'm going to just do buttonholes down the front. Buttonholes go on the right side. And then I also have to do buttonholes on the sleeve. And on the sleeve, the buttonholes go here. This is the one where you don't see the little lapped band. And then the button will go on the back side, so it will overlap like so. So I'm going to get those in, and then, oh, let me show you my buttons. These are shell buttons. I bought a huge pack of them. I've used them on a couple projects for my sister, and they're going to go on this dress too. Thanks for sewing with me. See you next week for another fun video.